chat frame. There's nothing you can do this time without my satisfaction. So you better do something about it right fucking now. Do something like what? Number one, I'm not testifying in one of these circle jerks no more, okay? I'm not some kind of wind up doll to be summoned and dismissed like a fucking toy. Number two, I want two souls before I leave here today. So take a memo and pass it on upstairs. I'll take you and whoever. Me? Yeah, you. I should have claimed you off the dumb heap after we surrender. And I want some more. And I want a tall old bourbon neat. <laughs> the fuck are you looking at? I'd like to start by questioning. Why, you so much you got to beat this right? No. When you're done crying, you just let me know. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe you can clear this up for me, but is today fuck with someone who can rip your heart out from your miserable dry of cunt day? Is that what day this is? Because unless I'm mistaken, I'm pretty sure today is not that day. Today is your day to answer my questions. When are you behaving like a pet or a child that is? Cunningham, I am directing you to hit the off switch on them flap and gums ears until further notice. Whoa. With all due respect to your stature and station, could you cut me a break here, please? I've always been very good to you. And I agree with that, that's all. Now look, your complaint has been duly noted, and it will be kicked upstairs at the conclusion of today's testimony, okay? Now, I've got to bring the damn jury back in here, but before I move to do so, what I need to know here from the both of you is that you will conduct yourselves with the deportment in adjustment to the solemnity of these proceedings. Now, can I have your words on that? I'm ready to proceed, Your Honor. With civility. If I'm met with civility. You know what, Cunningham? <laughs> All those excuses you got wedged between that dubious cleavage of yours, your mother, the bulimia, the herpes, the booze, the abortions, the rape, the bipolar pharmaceutical adventures, the twin suicide attempts, the abject failure in every relationship you've ever attempted, all those things do nothing to mandate the simple fact that there comes a time when the world stops rewarding potential. Okay? And when that time came for you, you threw yourself the world's biggest pity party, dedicated the rest of your short, pathetic, inconsequential life to finding fault everywhere fucking else, but in the return gaze of your own cosmetically altered reflection. Okay? A time piece! Perhaps you are out of bounds here. Don't buy you me on a good day. Your cock measures three and a half inches erect, <laughs> and it goes off on a hair trigger if you so much as sneeze. And worse than that, you're a flatterer, and your love of God is utterly false, as is your hair color. And the sole reason you're so hot with this nasty train wreck over here is that you're addicted to failure and, and tragedy, not because you think you're a piece of shit, but because, uh, El Fayumi, the truth is your self-diagnosis is correct. You're a bag of hot air and a weakling, and you will never, ever be loved. <laughs> I apologize for my earlier behavior, Counselor. I had some bad 
defeated firing squad. I don't know if all they wish they wish. But anyway, the truth is, I don't have to actively compete for human souls. I don't have to lull or flatter or tempt or deceive. Because of God at the helm, and you people running around wreaking havoc, I'll be honest, I spend most of my time on a sofa watching one-hour dramas on HBO. <laughs> and what? Getting talked out of heaven, that didn't bother you at all. There's a concept coming in called playing the cards you were dealt. One can either accept that concept, or one can slowly lose their mind, heart, and soul. I'd like to be more helpful to you here, but really that's what it all comes down to. Is that so? I'm just a fallen angel trying to keep my dick hard in a monotheistic society. <laughs> Anything else you want to ask me? Your Honor, this witness is clearly lying. I would like his entire testimony struck by the record. I'm not allowed that, sorry. You conjured him. What comes out of his mouth is your responsibility. Well, he's obviously lying. You want to expand your consciousness, Counselor. Your Honor! Unless you have another question, Cunningham, I suggest you stand down now. But... You've been, you've been instructed, forward or back. What will it be? Why do you love God, Mr. Satan? Lots of love. Specifically, Mr. Satan. Specifically, what do you love about God? I don't know where to begin. Pick a spot. I love God because he's all-powerful and all-forgiving. I love God because his justice is perfect. I love God because God loves me. God loves you. Very much. Gift basket, Christmas, Hallmark readings, and all the major offerings. Stop it! If God loves you, then why did he throw you out of his kingdom? He didn't throw me out, I left. That is not what it says in the Bible. Yeah, they watched that part. You're right. Because you people only respond to fear and threats. If they told you straight up there was no lock on the gates of heaven, you'd have no incentive at all to even try to be halfway decent. In other words, God lied. God didn't write the Bible. You do know that, right? Of course I know that. Well, why would you say that God lied? Mr. Satan, does God love Judas Iscariot? Yes or no? God loves everybody. And then Judas is in hell. So what use is God's love for Judas if my client is allowed to languish in damnation? Your client is free to leave whenever he wants. In fact, I wish he would. I could use the road. That's not true, and you know it. But maybe you want to sit down and catch your breath. The real truth is that God's love for us is conditional. Isn't that right? You failed to meet God's conditions, and he threw you in a trash. Judas failed, and he's in a catatonic stupor. Your client succumbed to despair. Yes, and if human despair is so powerful as to render God powerless over it, then what does that say about God? It says one of two things, Mr. Satan. Either God is not all-powerful and therefore useless, or God's love is conditional, which renders that love false and unworthy. Which one is it? Cunningham, please don't take this personally, but your father never really loved you or wanted you. Right? And the only reason your mother didn't abort you was because she was a 